This is Susan Wheelbanks with BlendedInsight.com. I am a holistic and integrative healing arts practitioner, an intuitive, and an energy healer. In this podcast, I share tips, tools, and suggestions that have helped me along my path in hopes of inspiring and helping you along yours. Let's get started with today's podcast topic. Hello, Bright Soul. Thank you so much for joining me on another podcast. And thank you to all of you who have left me donations, beautiful reviews and comments. I really appreciate it. And I am going to go right into the topic for today. And that is deciding if it is worth your energy and your time. I'm a big proponent of solitude. I'm a big proponent of productivity and managing your energy and your time. And I know that in this world of technology and chaos and people trying to pull your time, even just distractions, social media distractions, phone distractions, there's so much going on at any given time that it's really important, especially as we're going into this new year, to refocus and Notice where you're putting your energy and your attention and how can you clean that up so that you can feel more grounded, more centered, more productive and moving toward your personal goals and your intentions for this year. And the way that I like to do this is taking a mental inventory, especially in times where I'm feeling drained. So think about where do you spend a lot of your mental focus What are you thinking about? What are you energizing? Because where we're putting our energy and our thoughts is where we're also amplifying and bringing things in. And I don't say that to scare you, but I've noticed this even in my own life where I'll do almost experiments where I will take something that I want to focus on a lot. And it isn't just the mental thought, although that's a part of it, but it's the energy behind it. So if you've ever had times in your life where you sit and just think about something and you scare yourself and you have the body response to scaring yourself, your heart rate increases, your breathing changes, and all of a sudden you're tense and you just did it to yourself through your thinking. And we're very powerful. We're more powerful than we realize. So what I wanted to say also is focusing, just taking mental inventory, where am I thinking and what do I want to bring in? Where do I want to put my energy on and what is actually producing the goods and getting me closer to what I want? And one of the ways that you can remind yourself to just stop is I use sticky notes. I'm constantly listening to higher vibrational material and music, creating spaces in my day where I can sit. My breathing helps. My meditation practice helps. Moving your physical body helps. There are a lot of ways to get out of your head and to become more mindful and grounded and centered and focus on where you are right now so that you can get out of your head and then have that awareness of, wait a minute, where did I go? What am I thinking about? And what do I want to think about? That's going to progress me and get me closer to where I want to go. The other thing is clutter clearing. And this is mental clutter, emotional clutter, physical clutter. I'll have a thing where I'll continually remind myself of something I need to do. If it's physical clutter, or something that maybe I need to do like a phone call I need to make. So the way that I dump that out of my mind and eliminate the clutter is by writing it down. When I write it down, I can then cross it off as I get it done. So that way, I'm not just in this repetitive loop inside myself. The other thing is, when people are trying to engage you in their drama or their conflict, and those of us who are doing healing work or empathic work or intuitive work, I get a lot of that where people will poke around. And they're really wanting me to do an intuitive reading is what they're wanting me to do. But I've created such strong boundaries around my space because I can't be on all the time. That's not balanced for me and it isn't healthy. And I started to burn the candle at both ends. And so I will just tell people I'm not in the space to do that right now, but I can listen to you and I can be here with you, but I'm not going to just suddenly go into a reading for you at will unless I'm guided to do it. But in most of those instances, I'm not guided to do it. And so creating boundaries around that. So when people are pulling at you, you have to decide, is this where I want to put my time and energy right now? Because oftentimes people aren't going to do what you say anyway, especially if they're not paying for it, because there is an exchange and there's something psychology based when people aren't actually paying for the work you're doing, they often don't value it. So they just waste your time with it. And I'm not saying that's always the case, but it's often the case. And I've learned that over what, 14 years, 12, 14 years of doing this. So just creating a boundary around that. When people are 
engage, they're trying to engage conflict around me. And I know that they are, I just in that moment decide, is this worth my energy and my time? And if it's not, I do what I can to minimize the conflict and I keep it moving because I don't want to spill all my energy on something that's not going to go anywhere. We all have those people that they're not really going to change. They just like to frustrate their life with chaos. They aren't going to do anything meaningful or consistently to get better but they then just waste other people's time with their drama that they're never going to fix. And so with those people, I just minimize it, cut the cords and keep them moving because I already know that putting my energy there as I've done in the past, isn't going to produce any rewards. And it's an enabling behavior that won't help them anyway. If they don't have that outlet to spill all their stuff and someone to energize that drama with them, then they're left to their own thoughts and to figure it out. And which is what they really need so that they're not frustrating their life with chaos because people won't participate. So I hope that makes sense. The other thing you can do is setting your social media or your phone on do not disturb. I do this a lot. I have certain pockets of time where I answer comments on my YouTube channel. I have certain pockets of time where I respond to emails because otherwise I'm on all the time and it scatters my energy. And so in order to focus, I put my phone on do not disturb And I only answer or read when that time is allotted for me. And that way I'm not feeling torn all the time because with all the bells and notifications on our phones and computers, it's just a distraction. It's really not helpful. At least it's not for me. So that's another thing that I do. And the last thing I wanted to offer, and this is really quick. It's just a reminder came into me to record this. So I'm going to do it really quickly is When I'm about to engage in something, I create a little moment of times where I'm not reacting and just say, where is this going to get me? Where is this action going to get me? So because there's been times and I've shared this in previous podcasts over the past past year where people have behaved in a way that's incredibly unethical, in my opinion. And so I've now learned the true motives and the true heart of people. And there are people that I still have to interact with. So what I do is say, if I call this person out, or if I treat them the way that they treat me, where is that going to get me? So it's having those clarity moments within myself, soul to soul going inside and saying, is this going to profit me? Where is this going to get me? Is this going to help me get to my goals? Is this going to benefit my spiritual development? And if the answer is no, then I then do what I can to minimize the conflict, release that energy out of my aura and bless that person on their path of healing. I know it's not always easy and there's been times where I've reacted, but I'm really becoming more mindful of my energy is powerful. I've done a lot of spiritual work over the last couple of years and yours is too. And I'm on the higher path. I'm on the higher road. So it's important for me to, to recognize and intentionally place my energy in the direction that's going to move me forward. So that's really all I wanted to offer you today. Deciding is this worth my energy? Is it worth my time? And if it is not, do what you can to then shift your energy and your time into something that is going to be more beneficial to you and your path and your soul development. So let's go into a healing, you can uncross your arms and legs, focus on your breathing, I will turn the energy healing on.
Okay, and so it is. Friends, thank you so much for being here with me throughout these years, or if you've just joined, I'm really glad that you're here, and I want to wish you a beautiful week. And if you haven't left me a review on iTunes, I would so appreciate it. Take care. Bye-bye.